Good evening. I just finished watching the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson. It's about the Revolutionary War. The war which we embarked in to become our own nation. And if you read different books about that time, it is believed that there is a story when George Washington was at Valley Forge in the midst of the struggles and the depths of that winter when they were cold and starving that he had a vision from, a from an angel which told him that America would prevail that they would win the war and they, America would become a great nation. See, at that time, we were still pretty much people who followed what God said. So God was on our side. Then, of course, after that, in 1812, the British tried to do it again, and again, we prevailed. God was on our side. Then came the war between the states, commonly known as the Civil War, the American Civil War. Well, it's always famously stated that it was brother fighting against brother. And still, God prevailed. And we stayed a nation. But Satan had a trick up his sleeve. And as sure as the war was won, a Confederate sympathizer, John Wilkes Booth, decided to have a little play of his own by assassinating the president. There's actually other people they were going to try to assassinate, but those did not become what they expected. But the fact that they were able to kill Lincoln greatly changed things. Because if he had lived, his plan for reuniting the South back to the Union would have been much different than the reconstruction that followed after his death. And of course, as the years went by, we had people who kept trying to turn our country further and further away from God. But still our country prevailed. Then, of course, in the 1960s, when I was in elementary school, I remember vaguely kindergarten, but in first grade, I still remembered that they still had prayer and Bible reading in class. 
And the principal was the one who always read the prayer over the loudspeaker. But the teacher would pick a student each morning to come sit by her desk. And she would read whatever the Bible verse was for that day. And I remember that it always felt like an honor when the teacher picked you to sit by her desk when she did that. <clears throat> but then the next year it was gone because an atheist decided that she didn't like <clears throat> that in the school, so they took that up before the Supreme Court, and next thing you know, no more prayer in the schools. What does this have to do with everything? Well, it has a lot. You know, back in, you know, I grew up during a time when we were taught to respect law enforcement, respect our military, and to love our country. We were taught to love our flag, which was a symbol of our country. Then, of course, during the anti-war movement during Vietnam, where you had people who were burning the American flag as a right of protest, because they said it, it represented the government. Well, that is a completely false assumption because nowadays you got people who burn the flag and they are saying that the Constitution gives them that right as they mean to protest. But what they do not understand is the flag does not represent the government. It represents us, the people, each one of you, red, yellow, black, and white, it represents everyone. So when you're burning that flag or spitting on that flag or tramping on the flag, it has nothing to do with the government. You are spitting, trampling, and burning yourselves. This flag is about all of us. The 50 stars and 13 stripes is for each living one of us. You know, back in the Revolution and the Civil War, that was back during a time when you had people who, kids, actually, young kids, who would actually be along with, marching along with the army, who would be beating the drums. And it was always the flag bearer. A person who colored the colors on each side. And especially during the Civil War, one of the people who won one of the first medals of honor was a black soldier who I will have to come back later and tell you who that was. But there's a black soldier who was carrying the American flag. And 
and he wasn't the one who initially carried it because the other person was shot. He picked it up and carried it to rally his troops, and he was given one of the first medals of honor. So what did this mean? Well, number one, if you looked at the state of our country today, despite what our so-called representatives in government, I refuse to call them leaders because they do not lead, but what our representatives in government say is completely different than what they mean. They are driving us further and further away from God with issues which God would not approve of. You have the Catholic Church who says that they refuse to give communion to the President of the United States because of his stance on abortion. Why does this make sense? Because when the disciples brought, excuse me, when the, when the, when the people brought children to Jesus, and the disciples tried to push them away, Jesus said not to do that. He said it is better for someone who tries to cause harm to children as if they hung a rock around their neck and threw them in the water. And by abortion, you're basically stopping that child's life before it even has a chance to begin. But that's not what this is about. This is about putting God first back in our country. He said that if we are to be with him, he would save our country. He would save our land. We need to be putting him first above everything. I fail on that all the time, but I know it needs to be done. As for a flag, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of who and what we are. It has stood the test of time from the American Revolution until now. We have people who have proudly served our cause who have died under that flag. And what is important about that? If you ever seen a plane unloading the coffins, every service member who has died for our country And it is draped in a flag. I shouldn't have to explain that to you. People say, why well, I support our troops, I support our veterans, but I don't support our government. And that flag stands for government. No, it doesn't. The government, the flag stands for us as the American people. 
Right now, our government has had us so twisted up, it has us so far split apart, it's not even funny. We're supposed to be the United States of America. United, that's the key word. And regardless of whatever party you belong to, we are all on the same team. We are all Americans, except for those who are illegal and refugees. But even some of them are trying to become Americans. We're all here to try to make this place we live a better place. But to do that, we need to put God first and he will show us the way. If that doesn't happen, now I can guarantee you that he is coming back real soon and he is not going to be happy. So I say you need to make right now with God and with our country so we can heal this land and get back to being the land of the free and the home of the brave. God bless America.